Hi, everybody, and welcome to Exegetically Speaking, a podcast of the friends and faculty of Wheaton College, Wheaton, Illinois, and the Lanier Theological Library in Houston, Texas. My name is David Capes, and I am the Senior Research Fellow at the Lanier Theological Library and a former dean up there in Wheaton at the School of Biblical and Theological Studies. Our purpose in these podcasts is really very simple. We want to promote the study of biblical languages, Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic, so we can read the Bible more faithfully, study it more fully, and not just read it, but to live it. Joining me today on Exegetically Speaking is Dr. Madison Pierce, who is Assistant Professor of New Testament at Trinity International University. She's written a book called Divine Discourse in the Epistle to the Hebrews, published by Cambridge University Press in 2020. She has her BA from Wachita Baptist University in Arkansas, a bunch of friends down there, and they did her PhD from Durham University. Dr. Pierce, welcome. Oh, thank you so much, David. It's wonderful to be here and to be at least with a mutual friend of some beloved professors. So. Oh, I know. Yeah, you studied Greek with one of my former students, so that was yeah. terrific. So we need to talk about that. Tell me, how did you get started with this, okay? I mean, how did you get started reading Greek and Hebrew and all that stuff? <laughs> yeah, my origin story is a little funny. At about 14, I kind of realized that I really liked teaching people. I like to explain things and all of that, and that went a roundabout way, but eventually ended up as a biblical studies major at Washita and fell in love. It was with Marvin Pate. I took a class on theology of Paul, and I thought oh, this yeah. is exactly where I need to be. Um, and the, ne- the next semester ended up in a class with Joey Dodson learning Greek. And, oh, I loved it so much. I really fell in love with the languages. I, I just... I knew that that's that's where, you know, that was going to be my passion going forward. And so continued, went to TEDS, where I'm teaching now, and uh, took Hebrew, actually, with Andy Abernathy. He was my teaching fellow way back when, so another a friend of yours. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and just it's have continued world, on. small world, right? It's a small, yeah. <laughs> small world. So, so did, did, did you have a natural ability with languages, do you think, or, um, or did it come hard to you? It... it <laughs> I'm going to sound like a, a terrible villain when I say that. No, it came it came pretty naturally. There are aspects of language learning that are difficult for me, and I, I find that I, I um, have a little bit more difficult time memorizing things than I did when I was, you know, 20. Mm-hmm. But ten, tend to have it come rather naturally between having a really rigorous English grammar teacher when I was in middle school. And then, you know, having um, some propensity for memorization, languages have come really naturally to me. Uh, Hebrew came, was harder than Greek, certainly. Yeah, um, yeah. Moving to a, 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 a language where the characters weren't quite as familiar was hard. Yeah. I called it squiggles for quite a while. Squiggles. <laughs> those squiggles on the page. Uh, no, that's an yeah. olive. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, yeah. I, but you know, a lot of folks are... are, are don't want to start a language because they're not sure they're going to have it, be any good at it. But there's no really no way to know until you just sort of dive in, right? Oh, absolutely. And it really, I mean, the the hard work for any of us, whether it does come a little bit more naturally or whether, you know, it's something that uh, you really struggle with. I mean, just consistent time and in mm-hmm. consistent chunks is really good. And I think it's also really important for students to kind of understand where their sticking points are, because there's a lot of different ways to learn languages mm-hmm. and uh, and a lot of different ways to kind of put the pieces together. And so when I'm teaching them, I mean, this is a different question, but when I'm teaching, I try to approach it from different angles, good. kind of acknowledging that students have different strengths. So. D- different learning styles as well. Where today yeah, we're going to yeah. talk a little bit about Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 one and two, and uh, take us a little bit through this because uh, you pointed out something to me that I really hadn't noticed and thought about before, even though I've translated the book of Hebrews in from Greek, but some of our English translations take us down the wrong path, don't they? Yeah, or at least they, they distort a little bit of, of maybe what the author is after, and I think there's a good reason that they have in mind. But yeah, we'll, we'll look at this. So okay. Hebrews 1, 1 to 4 is, of course, it's kind of famous. It's this long sentence. It's this beautiful description of who the son is. And it starts out in the past, and this I'm reading from the NIV here to, to kind of set the stage for us. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But 
And these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. It's hard for me to stop here, but I'm going to stop for the sake of time. It, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's some good stuff. It keeps that, going. Uh, it keeps going. It on, does. Right? But, yeah, it's such good yeah. stuff. So in, in the English, you notice that I um, use the adversative but. But in these last days, he's spoken through the son. And so mm-hmm. a lot of times when we're reading through Hebrews, we think of this really strong contrast that Hebrews is about how the son is better. He's different. He's not like the priests. He's not like the angels. He's not like these people. But a really crucial part of the argument of Hebrews is actually how Jesus is the same as a lot of the revelations of God. Mm. And we actually see that more clearly indicated in this verse when we look at the Greek. Mm. So in the Greek, rather than having that adversative, adversative, so something like de, uh, probably de, but maybe Allah or something like that, we actually don't have an adversative at all. Mm. Instead, we have what I have translated as a sort of attributive participle, you know, functioning to describe God. Okay. So when I would, if you're looking at the Greek, what I would take to be the main cl- clause in Hebrews 1 and 2 is hatheos. So that's about mm-hmm. the fifth word mm-hmm. or fifth, you know, fifth and sixth words. Mm-hmm. And then you skip ahead a little bit and then you say, see, a Yes. And that would be the main verb there. And so what's in the middle from lalesas, you know, really to prophetess, is this attributive phrase um, Mm -hmm. or adjectival Mm -hmm. phrase. So God, who spoke to our forefathers or to our ancestors in the prophets, speaks to us now in these last days in the sun. I'm I'm a little out of order there. So it's God speaks in the sun. God, the same God who, who... formerly spoke through the prophets now speaks through the son. And so it's so, about, so, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. But so, so what is the, what does the, 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 but add to that? I mean, by, by putting, but in there in the middle, and I see exactly what you're talking about by putting that word in there. How, how does that sort of change it? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think that the, it's reasonable. I mean, part of this is that this is a really long sentence. And so we have to find a way of bringing it into English in a way that makes best sense. But what the but really does is it does draw a stronger contrast. It implies that God formerly did this, and now he's doing a different thing. And mm. of course, there there is a, a degree of contrast. I mm. mean, the revelation in the prophets is not the same as God revealing himself as, a, you know, on earth, in the flesh, right. um, in, in the sun, uh, which is, I think, what this verse has in mind, actually, is uh, the revelation of the sun and the incarnation. That's different, but at the same time, <laughs> but. it is also, yeah, there is consistency. The, all of Hebrews is going to be about how God has been communicating to us. The series of quotations in Hebrews 1, the, the quotations from Jesus of, you know, Psalms and Isaiah and Hebrews 2. Right. Right. They've, we've been hearing the voice of God. Our our ancestors did too. It's just, it, in some ways, the same same exact words, but we're hearing them in a fresh way. And so, it's about the consistency of God as much as it is about the new final revelation in the Son. Hmm. That that's a really great reading of that text, and that's very helpful to us. In remembering that sometimes reading in the original languages helps us a great deal sort of clarify yeah. some of theological, historical points. Yeah. And it's, I, I think that it does unlock a lot. So, I mean, it's one of my pet things that I, I think that we need to look for comparisons or similarities in Hebrews too, because, I mean, if, if the author of Hebrews is making an argument based on how Jesus is a priest and a sacrifice and all these things, then he's drawing on the similarity between a system that his audience already knows. It's really right. foreign to us because that's not the way that we're interacting with the Lord. It's not the way but we did church, them, right? No, no. Yeah. But for them, that was the way that they, at least previously, if, if the temple has been destroyed or whatever, they, they were interacting with God for centuries. So, mm-hmm. yeah. This is a great word. Thanks, Dr. Pierce, for being with us today. Thank you, David. Thanks to Silvio Vasquez, Rebecca Larson, and Krista Sanchez for helping us to produce this podcast. Thanks as well to Phil Keggy for our music. If you want to study biblical languages, the best place you could do that is Wheaton College. They have an amazing program. 
one of the best I've ever seen, whether you want to be a graduate or an undergraduate student. So go to the website, www.wheaton.edu, and look for Modern and Classical Languages Get Started Today. If you have questions or comments about this podcast, we'd love to hear from you. Contact us at exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. That's exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. Thanks for listening.